Welcome to Sunday's edition Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, March 8th, 2020, and we've got a great watch list for you today. T-R-I-L-M-T-E-M-S-N-D-X-I-N-O, Apple, J-D, Tillery, T-L-R-Y, and G-I-L-D. And good morning, Miss Vegas. And good morning to Jim and everybody out there. I hope you're having a nice weekend. The weather's actually not too bad. So uh, hopefully everyone's uh, uh, put their clock forward, you know. So uh, remember, put your clocks forward so uh, you wake up for the market tomorrow. And uh, obviously, once again in the news, we have lots of corona news going on all over the world. Um, I was reading that uh, obviously in Mexico, they have another seven cases uh, Japan apparently is going to invalidate all types of visas for Chinese and South Korean nationals. And they're also suspending the visa-free entry for residents of Hong Kong, Macau, and South Korea starting tomorrow. And the reason they're doing that is obviously to curb the spread of the coronavirus. And this was a notice received from the Chinese embassy in Japan. Uh, furthermore, in Italy, a lot of regions in lockdown, the Lombardy region, Venice, Modena, Parma, Reggio Emilia, Rimini, all kinds of uh, regions in Italy shut down because of coronavirus. So, um, you know, Malaysia is also banning the entry of cruise ships, all cruise ships, due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. So this is going to affect, we know, obviously, the cruise lines again. So... You know, stay tuned for a coronavirus video that we're going to be doing. Uh, Jim's actually going to be producing that, and that'll be later today. So please smash the bell and subscribe so that you can get notices um, with respect to the coronavirus plays. Because as you know, they're going to be hot tomorrow, and uh, they're all themes, and uh, they could make a good amount of money if you can trade them and uh you know trade i guess trade what's in front of you and trade the chart action so jim's going to do a special video on that so subscribe and follow so you can get notified and one last comment about the corona obviously big news that there's a lot of cases also in new york city and there's a total number of cases about 76 uh last i checked uh early this morning so jim we'll be looking forward to that production later today on corona stocks all righty now, Washington's okay, so getting hit pretty hard, too, up there oh, on yeah. the northwest part of the United States. So we're going to start talking about the list for this video. So let's talk about Trill. And so Trillium Therapeutics uh, last closed at $7.22 and uh, had some nice 52-week highs here. Uh, definitely um, has that look that it kind of still wants to go. Just keep a watch on it. It kind of had a bit of a shooting star candlestick, um, but still keep this on watch on Trillium Therapeutics. The company, obviously they're a Canadian company and they're into the biotech sector. And, uh, you know, they have all kinds of things in the pipeline. They got the TTI 621 and 622. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of things going on and um, they're going to be working on various treatments uh, what they look to do is they do a lot of evaluations on tumor biopsies and also non-injected cancer lesions and what they do is they help to characterize uh, the tumor to determine any changes that are anticipated um, so that's kind of an interesting and they also working on their other drug that they're working on is for patients with hodgkin lymphoma so um, definitely one to watch this week as well. So, Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on the Trill chart, please. I found my Trill on Blueberry Hill. This is T-R-I-L. Yeah. So let's pull up the yearly chart. I always like to look at that yearly first. Get rid of these here little other indicators I got. Pull up the one year. You can see I've more or less charted this up pretty good, so I'm going to erase this real fast and just... Try to find me some uh, real solid support levels on the yearly. I see right down here at 558, 580, 586, 
See another one right here at 5, 638, and then we've got one right down here right around the 622, 620 area. We had nice little daily candles on this so we're going to just going to try to keep it up here at high you can see we've had a bottom of 24 cents and here lately we've had a, a, a yearly high of 797 so let's pull it let's get down here one more little support area right down here at 505 for low 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 let's go to the 20 day real fast you can see all them trend lines more or less bounce out where i've been I do see a place right here at 550 that we need to go ahead and hit. That's going to be the low support. 550. Let's turn that into a red line. So we're going to chalk that down for our low support entry. If we decide to get in and we see a strong pullback, if not, the resistance to break is going to be right up here, right around the 786 area. And I'm working off the bases, the foundation of the candlesticks, creating new resistances and new lows. So we have a little support area right here at 680. That's going to be your first support. Your second support channel is going to be right here at 620 to 638. And then the low strong buy is going to be between the, the 550 and this spot right here at 569. And I'm going to color that in so I can remember that for a strong buy. And we'll put that right there got to be precise got to make it count the next one's going to be right here that's going to be your second support channel Whoop. there we go and then you got your first support channel right in here between 680 and 718 and I'm going to go ahead and draw that in so this is how we're going to call it out we got low support at 550 to 569. We got a second pivot point area. I would call second support at 620 to 638. And then this first channel of support, 680 to, to 718. And if we can break the resistance of 786, we're going to go up higher. And this is Trill. Keep a good eye on it. And that's Trill, Miss Vegas. The next one we're going to talk okay. about is going to be MTEM. Yeah, so MTEM, you know, this company is called Molecular Templates, and they will be at the Barclays Global Healthcare Conference on Wednesday. They will be doing a presentation around 10 minutes before 5 o'clock. And this one here, keep on watch as well on MTEM. Really like this weekly chart. And, you know, they did have some news not too long ago. Uh, a couple weeks back, they did mention that they uh, started the um, dosing of the phase one study for their TAC-169 for uh, patients with either relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. And, you know, multiple myeloma, you guys know, it's a cancer that forms in the type of a white blood cell, which is the plasma cell. <clears throat> and what it does, you know, your plasma helps you fight infection um, and attack germs. And uh, multiple myeloma causes cancer cells to accumulate actually in the bone marrow. And what they do is they crowd out the healthy blood cells. So uh, we hope that um, this uh, study that they're doing is actually going to help treat multiple myeloma because that'll be a huge groundbreaking news if they ever get some really good results on that trial. Uh, but MTEM, beautiful chart. Um, one to watch as well. So um, could be a potential continuation, maybe see if there's a pullback opportunity. Um, you know, the last time, you know, they haven't had an offering in a while. The last time they had one was back in November, about $8 a share. But I mean, look where this company's come from November. We're only in March. They've doubled 100% in price. That is amazing, amazing growth on this stock. So keep a watch on this because this company is going places in my opinion. So definitely keep a watch and see if you're interested to day trade it, maybe look at it from a swing trade perspective. Um, and for those of you that like biotech stocks, maybe you like long-term, but you have to do your own due diligence. You know, we're not licensed professionals. Just sharing some ideas for you to consider for your trades. Certainly check it out on MTEM. So Jim, let's hear about 
your thoughts on that chart because it's had quite the move since November. It sure has. I only got one trend line on this, and it's at 791. That's an oldie. Oldie but goodie. And we're going to go ahead and call this probably, oh, let's say low support. You know, I'm starting this out fresh. I'm going to say 1384. I need to go up here and change this diagram. And by the way, you see, I pull up the websites. You can find out a lot of information on them websites if you ever want to study stocks. Then we've got another one right here, right around the 1469, where it consolidated in this month and a half period. We did pull back to that support level once. And then we've got another one right here at 1505. And then I'm going to go up here, and then we had tried to have to break out here. And we're going to call that a little support level. And then we've got another resistance level right here, 1779 with a long of. Now this will change as I go down to the 20 minute, I mean the 20 day, one hour chart. Let me see if I missed anything. I'm going to come down here one more little, because I want to finish this channel out right down here. We'll go ahead and make that 13.02. So let's bring us to the 20 day. Let's see if I see anything different here on the 20 day. I see a support level right here at 15.57. And I see another one in this little jungled area right in here. Right at 17.22. And you see we had the low on that Friday at here at 17.02. With a resistance to break. I'll raise that resistance up now to 1848. And when I bring this down to a daily, whoop, uh, oh, no, I didn't get it. Uh, right there at 1851. So we're going to bring this up now to the daily three minute. See if I missed anything. Now nah, we're going to go to the daily one minute. Yeah, I have to get a little bit better picture here. So we got a resistance right here at. 1756 so let's look at the 20 day one more time and we'll kind of give an idea well oh, nope we got to come up here and draw these resistance levels 1886 that was a good year 1907 was another good year so here we go we're going to bring this up to the 20 day now and i'm going to call this trade out we got a little support level at 1702 that's going to be your first little support, but it's going to be a lot stronger down here at 1654. I'd like to see that 1654 hold. So that's going to be our first support at 15, 1654 if it decides to pull back any. And then we've got a lower support right down here at 1557 with a resistance to break. And that's going to be right here. I'm going to put another trend line right here on the 20 day that I missed. And that resistance that we got a break is going to be that 1797 area, 18 bucks. If we can go past the $18, we'll get up here to a double top area of 1850 and then run it all the way up to 19. So low support is going to be right down here at the 1557. The second support is going to be right here at 1654 with your first channel of support at 1702 to 1722. And if we ever get down in this area, those lines will now become resistances. If we go ahead and break out, we need to break the 1851 to get back here to the 1912. But this is one we're going to keep on watch. The volume is consistent, as you can see. Right now, we did have a little squeeze on it Friday where it pulled back. And that could be a retracement bounce back up to that resistance level I said right there at 1797 to 18 dollars and that's going to be hard to break if we can start moving above that and the momentum still sticks in look for it to get past 1850 and then to that high of 1912 and that's it for mtem and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be sndx miss vegas oh yes yeah. so i really like sndx um you know they are a company that's uh looking to help people with cancer live longer and better than ever before they're obviously in very involved into innovative pipeline of cancer therapies um you know sndx i mean you want to talk about a stock that's had a lot of movement i mean sndx is one of those stocks i mean if you actually take a look of uh, you know even going back to as early as january earlier this year i mean the stock was just under seven bucks 
and look where it is now. I mean, we're up over uh, just a little over $12. And the interesting thing with this particular stock, it doesn't have tons and tons of volume, but yet the price of the stock just keeps moving, you know? Um, so definitely one to watch. Uh, SNDX is also going to be in some investor conferences. You know, the CEO back in February, he purchased over 12,500 shares. Uh, he paid at the time over $8, but here's what I want to mention. This company has been given uh, a lot of initiations from the different hedge funds and banks and uh, Baird's has given this company a target raised target of $27. Another company called BCS has given SNDX an overweight rating. And the other thing too is that earnings per share just a couple days ago beat by two cents and revenue beat as well. So talk about a company that has a lot of things going on for them. Uh, this is one that you should be looking at. Uh, the fact is that, um, you know, they did give some updates on their clinical pipeline. They did mention as well that, um, you know, they're also working on, you know, breast metastatic breast cancer, which by the way, they're expecting to get the information. This is a phase three, this is really important. They're expecting the phase three results by the end of the second quarter. So we're basically talking about uh, I guess June, we should hear some news on it by June. Um, and they're looking to do a potential NDA filing as well. Uh, later this year, they're working also on some acute leukemia. And the other important part is this first quarter 2020 financing of $55 million. Okay, that extends their runway cash into 2021 through all key milestones. So the fact is that the, f the company has cash. And so when they have cash, you can anticipate that there should not be any offerings because they have cash all the way through into 2021. So that's to me, very good information and exciting to hear what's gonna happen. You know, like I said in June with regards to that metastatic breast cancer update. So. Stay tuned and watch this stock, but I really like this weekly chart as well. And, um, you know, they were also featured in a magazine called uh, Cancer Cell and Science. So stay tuned and uh, keep this on your watch for a swing trade or day trade, whatever works for you. Or you might like it longer term now that I've given you some more information. This is a really interesting company and I'm actually going to look at it longer term too because I'm really liking the stuff in the pipeline. I really like their cash as well. Jim, let's hear about SNDX. SNDX. Well, this is a yearly chart. We did have a yearly low back, oh, almost a year ago at 452. She had a nice little run into the year. It ran all the way up to 1007 and then pulled back to a low support of right around the 551 area. As you can see, we had a double bottom there. It did, that might have just been a bad day or something, but it looked to me like it rebounded that same day. So we've had a double bottom, then we had the double bottom breakout where it ran back up to a resistance level of 949, pulled back down again to support level right around. So we're getting higher lows, which I, I really appreciate when I'm looking at a yearly chart. Oh, I can't put 666 in there, so I gotta make it an eight. So I don't wanna jinx this trade. Let's go ahead and put an 818 in there. So this is your yearly chart with a low support of, I mean, a low yearly low of 452 with a yearly high of 1227 with my resistance right at 1204. We're going to pull up the 20 day. And also I want to go ahead and put a little red line on this number right here because that's where we had that peak before. And that's going to be a real solid support when we come to look at it on the 20 day. If it shows up on the 20 day, which I think it will, there you go. So that's going to be your try and look where it rent land landed right here on this day right here. Now I didn't notice that on the, on the yearly, but yeah, it did pull back to that 1073. So we've got to kind of go all the way back to 901 here because that was just three days ago on Tuesday or on Monday. And then it kind of pulled back and had that huge two engulfing candles. 
and held above the bases of them candles, which still guaranteed a bullish trap. And so we've got our first support right here at 1074 is going to be our low support. Well, let's, I mean, this is, this is really nice, real thick. So let's make this first support at 1167. Then we've got maybe some, I mean, this has had a real good run. We've got a pivot point area right here at 1074. So anything above it is going to be like a bullish trend still. Anything below it will become bearish. And then we got that 903 just, just in case it decides to have a triple bottom. You see we did have that down here before, so we're going to make a little cloud in here between the 911 903 and 911 that's going to be your very low low strong buy support your real hard support level is going to be at 1074 and then your first support i like to see it hold this 1167 but it can pull back to this previous high that we had here at 1129 so that's going to be your first channel of support which i know it's a big spread but look at the run it's had here from 901 all the way to 1227 and it is kind of descending a little bit just a little bit but it hit I mean it, it, it pulled back most of the day and then we had a nice at the end of the day run which if you notice the spy on Friday it had a pretty bad pretty good sell-off I was calling it out in the room and uh, thanks to one of our buddies in the room uh, mr. Longhorn he put me in a put call for Thursday and I made a real good profit on it and then I tried to play it again a couple times uh, Friday, and and I got a little nervous when it just would not finally start to bounce. And you know, it's one thing that you got to learn is that fear of si that cycle of fear, because right after I sold it, within five minutes, it started running up, and you know, I lost eighty bucks, and I could have made at least two hundred dollars a contract. So, but always cut your losses fast. It's better than, than getting stuck in something and, and keep hoping. But So the next one we're going to talk about, let's run this buy one more time. Low, low support, strong buy at 901. Pivot point area right here at 1074. And the resistance to break is going to be right up here, right around the, uh, oh, I'm going to say right around the 1227. I'm going to stick with that high on that one. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Ino. And Miss Vegas made a great call on Ino Friday and... What a beautiful call, Miss Vegas. I know. Oh my goodness! It, it we've just been on the stock like over like for over a week. Um, I mean, the stock was under four dollars, guys, back on March second, like down to three dollars and eighty three cents, and look where it is now, closed at fourteen oh nine. Talk about an opportunity to make money on the Corona place. Here's another one. Now this company I know is called Inovio, and um, you know this company. Uh, you know, they work on so many things, but one of the things I really like about this company is they really work on um, people from with the, the obviously that have HPV, you know, disease, the human papilloma virus, cancer, and specifically infectious diseases. And I love that word um, because they look to destroy and clear. Uh, diseases and um, you know they're really working on some amazing what they call plasmid technology and um, they have a lot of things going on a lot of things in the pipeline I mean they're in the phase three development for the treatment of HPV related cervical precancer that is going to be a huge breakthrough if they can get that um, going on and the thing is they announced a couple days ago um, you know, earlier this week, that they have accelerated their timeline for the coronavirus vaccine called INO4800. Now, apparently, they have human trials planned for April. So that's next month. So that's not too far from now. Uh, time does fly. And so they have apparently looking, they're saying about 1 million doses are expected by year end. So this company is getting a lot of attention as well as part of those corona stock plays so add this one to your list because look at the run this has had i mean in a, such a short time as well so jim let's hear about that chart yeah and, and you know uh anything that has the mention of i in uh the coronavirus 
are in play right now. You just got to figure out where the supports are and where the resistances are. And I'm going to pull up the Corona website here that we have 107,353 cases with 3,646 deaths. Rest in peace. And we have a total recovery rate of 60,637. And I take this, like I've said before, with a bigger grain of salt, but because I know that we're probably not getting everything that we need to know. But at least we have something to reference by when we come in in the morning. And this thing's jumped up big time over the weekend. So it's just, I still think we're going to be bullish on the Corona place until probably for about a couple more weeks, maybe a month. And that's it. So let's look at the stock itself. Miss Vegas called this. We've called this out on the video before, and we've had a great run on it. She ran from a low on 20 day from 303 all the way up to 16 bucks on Friday. And we do have a little resistance right here. We have some right here. This is going to be an easy trade to call here. Got another one right here, another support level right there. And then we had the breakout right here of the engulfing candles on Friday right there. And then we've got another one right there at 9, 977 with a resistance to break of 1498 that's on the 20 day I failed to bring up the year so I'm going to look at the year real fast to draw a trend line in here at 1076 and a resistance to right there at 1407 with a low of right down here at eight bucks and then we're going to bring it up to the daily three minute see if I missed anything you know I got a little channel right in here that I don't want to leave out so that's going to be kind of a little support channel area. And then we got one right down here. And that's on the three minute. I could more or less call it off this three minute with a resistance to break up here at 1595. Let's look at the one minute just in case, see if I missed anything. I mean, we do have a little response right up here where we had that breakout pre uh, into open from 961 to. 1318 so you knew that this stock was going to be bullish for the day and I always tell the room if you miss that first initial breakout wait for that pullback because that pullback will create a support level a real strong support level and that's going to be right here in this little channel right here at 1122 and 1334 I want to definitely color that in because that's going to be a strong low support for me to take the trade if it decides to pull back but that's and I've showed this many 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 a times how later in the evening it can pull back after hours even and hit that support level on that very first initial pullback but this has been bullish you see how it did right here we had that initial high look what happened right in here see how it pulled back right to that channel so you got to use these as support levels when they consolidate and they start to pull back they're going to become a support level or a real hard resistance to break. We did have like an ascending triangle that came out on it with a double top. And I'm going to draw that trend line right up in here. And see, I'm going to keep following that trend line all the way up. You see how it pulls back? You see how we had this initial breakout. It pulled back and hit that trend line. We pulled back and hit that trend line. Then we had the huge breakout on the ascending triangle that happened right here. And then she went ahead and pulled back and hit that trend line. So that trend line was in existence for three quarters of the day. And you could have held that pretty strong. So that low support is going to be right here at 1322 to 1334 if it decides to knife. Your second channel of support is going to be right in here between the uh, 1294 and the 1320. And then the resistance and your first support is going to be anywhere up in this area right in here. As long as we can hold, I'm going to draw this in because I want to keep that an eye up for a real strong buy. That's like a pivot point area. Whoa, that's wrong trend line. Let me erase that. Remove. So we're going to draw this little figure right in here. That's going to be your first, your solid support channel. I like to see it hold that and continue on up and break the resistance of 1595. And I know, keep it on watch. This thing's been a, been a been had great volume. 
We've called it out for the last couple of weeks. It pops up on the scanner. Pay attention to it. I N O. The next one we're going to talk about. Everybody knows an apple a day will keep the doctor away. Yeah, I just wanted to just mention one yeah. last thing too about I N O. We did make an option trade on this on oh, Friday. Yeah. We took the um, fourteen dollar calls at three dollars and sixty cents, so three hundred and sixty dollars for one contract, expiring on March the twentieth. So we did take that trade uh, just based on the volatility of the stock and also the fact that there was some volume as well um, in that option contract. So um, for those of you that like to trade options and don't really want to you know, spend a lot of money on buying the actual shares, you may want to look at the option contract for March 20th for uh, the $14 strike. So That's right. let's see how those work tomorrow if there's any kind of action. But um, those contracts already that same day were up, I think, over $100 later that day. So that's interesting. They were already on the move. So let's talk about the Apple. Keep the doctor away. Well, talk about Apple. Definitely want to mention that uh, there a lot of New York City retailers are, have run out of the iPhone 11 model. Apparently, um, if you live in New York and you're on the hunt for a new iPhone, you might have some problems finding one because of the coronavirus. Apparently, retailers around the city have run out of stock or are running low on the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro models. Um, carriers are stockpiling them at nearby warehouses. Um, they're saying that uh, a lot of retail locations around Manhattan uh, were contacted and they basically said that um, they have low stock and they're not getting as many shipments. Um, they really have no idea when things will get back to normal. They don't have any estimated arrivals on any shipments at all. Apparently Verizon uh, employee commented and said it's a Verizon wide issue. So if you go to Verizon to get a phone, uh, and you want to get the iPhone 11 Pro or the iPhone 11, you're not going to have any luck getting one. Apparently, it's been out of stock, apparently in the east, Upper East Side, um, across also AT&T stores. So, you know what? Unfortunately, um, you're going to have to wait for your Apple phone if you're looking to get one. Um, I do remember Apple said that uh, they were looking to shift some of their um, workforce uh, to another location um, temporarily and they also apparently reopened the facility in China as well so maybe they'll get back on track with getting these uh, phones manufactured and shipped so uh, we'll have to wait and see um, the status but that's the latest is that apparently in New York they're running out of uh, these iPhones or a lot of them don't even have them in stock so Hopefully that'll um, resolve itself or resume based on uh, developments with Apple reopening that China location. Um, we see here that Apple closed beautifully at uh, 289.03. And that is a nice close because I was really waiting for that 287.50 to print um, to confirm that this was bullish. And so it did close nicely. Will this hold is what's key because, you know, with this Corona stuff, so many of these large cap stocks get affected and uh, sometimes you know we'll see the pullback and uh, it does affect the market so um, we'll have to see what apple does tomorrow um, definitely has a, you know some weakness but it did close nicely um, i like that it did close at that number and so we have to see if it's going to hold or not hold and i mean i wouldn't want it i wouldn't want to see it go below 282 um, but again uh, I'd like to hear Jim your thoughts on this because Apple is, um, you know, has a lot of uh, activity on it because sometimes it behaves just like the spy. So uh, let's hear your thoughts on that. We had a lot of volume, over 56 million shares yep. on Friday alone. So obviously, people are probably buying these dips. In my opinion, I mean, low of the day was 281. I mean, even if you day traded the stock and you sold it here at the highs close to 289 it went as high as 290 82 you would have made good money yeah i mean that was a great great trade just for even trading the stock so jim let's hear your thoughts on apple there's two things that have interfered with the uh apple stock and that was the uh trade war and now we got this coronavirus 
so it, it will have a, an effect on the, on the company itself. And we did have good earnings on the last time it came out. You know, I think earnings might be affected this, this time out. But we, we did have a nice little generous pullback from 328 on the 20 day down to 256.37. I'm pretty sure that might have been the yearly high at 328. We'll check it out, see if it is on the yearly. Yeah, 327.85. And then we did come back and touch this 200 day on the yearly EMA. And that created a real solid bounce off that support level. And that's the 200 EMA. And she bounced right off of that and then kind of fell back up here to that resistance level right around the $300 area, 302. So let's pull up the 20 day. You know, this is one, like I said, is affected with the, the Corona. And we just kind of got to ride it out. I've always been bullish on Apple. But you just got to keep that in mind. It is related to China because there's a lot of people that like that iPhone over there. So we've got a low support down here right around the 273. If it does decide to break down, I need to go ahead and put this on here. So we're going to put 327.80 for a low solid support. We've got another spot right in here, right at the 385. I'm going to turn that into a red line. I'll tell you why. My reason in here in a second. Because we did kind of consolidate and it created a little, I would say, equilibrium or a pivot point in this channel. And we're looking at a channel. And what we want to do is we want to keep it in this channel. And the channels of support is going to be right down here at this bottom line of 281.09. Now, if that can hold, we're going to be in business. And I'm going to turn that into a red line. But when you're in, uh, I mean, I bet you see me pull that three-year chart up. So I'm going all the way back to three years looking for supports and resistances. So our first support is going to be this 281.12. That's going to be, and our strong buy is going to be anything below it. And you did see that it did hit that 200 EMA down here at 256.37 on a yearly daily chart on the EMA. So that's going to be a solid support that has to hold if you're looking at that. And I'm going to pull that up one more time on the yearly. Keep an eye because it does bounce off that 200 quite a few times. It, it, it had that drama back here when we had that little, I don't know what happened back then probably a little bit more trade war woes who knows and then we did have right here on the night on the we had that pull back to the 200 and then it ran all the way up and then we had that pull back here to the 200 so that's always a good strong basis to think if you found a bottom in a trade to look at that yearly and look at that three year for the 200 EMA and I'm going to pull this up to the 20 day one more time and give a final analysis we got 281.12 to hold. We have your first pivot point area right around the 285. And the resistance to break is going to be right up in here right around the 293.75 to a top resistance of right around the 302 to the 303.75 area, somewhere in that. That's going to be your resistance to break is going to be that 302.56. And if we can't hit that and a pull back we're going to be creating channel and no lower than that channel like i said that 260 is going to be a strong buy if it does dip below this first third support level of 281.12 and that's apple good you keep an eye on it every day it's a good one to watch and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be jd you know jd uh actually has released their earnings already uh, last week and they got an upgrade you know this is a china company you know jd you know people say what does jd stand for so it stands for jing dong and uh you know the company used to be called 360 360 buy and uh you know the ceo he's he was he's also the founder liu quin dong i mean he is the founder and owner and ceo uh since 2004 and huge competitor of alibaba Mr. Baba. And uh, they've had lots of upgrades and a lot of strength in this stock. And uh, I guess people are shopping online. Uh, 
So, uh, you know, JD had good earnings too. I mean, look at that. Look at the volume here. I mean, JD, if you look at, you know, going back even February uh, 27, I mean, the stock was around $38, you know, went to 42.55 on Thursday, Friday closed nicely at 42.16. So definitely keeping JD on your watch list because JD could have here some continuation since earnings is out of the way. We got good support at the 20 day. Uh, you know, I don't really know how effective this is. Definitely not thinking of Corona. Um, so definitely keep us on your watch. Really looking to trade this also from the options angle. We did trade this on options uh, and we had uh, done very well with this because we had bought $40 calls at the start of the week. And uh, we did really nice because we were in the money on Thursday. The stock went to 45.34, so we were in the money like five bucks a share. So we were quite happy there. Um, so Jim, let's hear about JD.com's chart because it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's had higher highs here in the last three months with a foundation support level of right around 36.96. So that's where I'm going to put a solid support for low buy at 36. 96 area that's going to be our little solid support level that's where we had to break out and then she's had nothing but higher highs on the two pullbacks that it did have created a higher high that last time and then we had a higher high last week that resistance is right around the 40 44 68 area could be a little bit lower I'll probably adjust that when I pull up the 20 day Let's pull up the 20 day now. See if I missed anything else. There's something right in here I want to put in. Right there at 4620. Pull up the 20 day. One hour. No, I didn't miss nothing. Maybe a little bit higher resistance at 4488. And then we got a little spot right in here of resistance at around 40. I'm kind of. When I'm doing this, as you're watching me right now, I'm looking for an equilibrium of where I think the resistance could be on the basis of the candles. Some might go a little bit above it, but more might go a little bit on it or below it. So I'm trying to find the one that stabilizes the best. And I'll, after I draw this in, I'm talking about right in here. See, we've had a pretty solid, we've had a little bit of higher and lowers up here, but it did, always did touch that resistance level at 43.90. So that's going to be like our third resistance with a, a, a breakout resistance of 44.88. And then the low support is going to be in this little chamber right down here where we had the previous highs and just couldn't break it. Had that lower high and it fell on back down to a, a very low support of 36.82. So in this channel right in here is going to be our third support. And we're going to draw that in with a blue line so I can remember this. And that's going to be like a strong buy to me on a 20-day chart. No lower than that 40 bucks. 30, 39.88. That's going to be your solid support. Going to call that the third. Your first one's going to be right here at 40.84. Or your second one. And then your first one's going to be here at 41.50. The resistance to break is going to be here at 42.20. If we can get past that 42.20 that we did try to break out on Friday. We can bring it up to these next three resistance levels and you see them here on the chart. All you got to do is stop this video and write these numbers down. We got 43, 4390 and then a resistance to break of 4468 to 4488. And that low strong buy if it does pull back to 3696 maybe a little place I want to be or right around 37 is a place that I would really want to try to get into the trade. There is another support level right here that could hit. Whoops. Let's change this. Right there, right around the 38.75. So if this doesn't hold, it can pull back to these other two supports. But if this does hit and stays in this channel and starts to rebound up, you want to try to run it past this next resistance level that I've been calling out up in here, which were supports that can become resistance at 41.50 on up. And that's JD. We do like to trade. Tillery's next. T-L-R-Y with earnings coming out. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I wonder how those earnings are going to do. 
um, the weekly charts just look horrible. And I was actually talking to Clay, you know, Clay's in our room here. He's, uh, he owns a marijuana shop in the U.S. And I was asking him, you know, what's happening with these marijuana stocks? I mean, we know they've all taken a bit of a, quite the pullback. And he mentioned that, uh, you know, there's um, the reason they've pulled back several reasons. He said um, there's a lot of chaos around policy leadership in the U.S. He said there's also the elections issue. Um, he said, uh, you know, just to keep some positives, he said that there are some other things in the pipeline with some stocks, some marijuana stocks, but they have definitely pulled back. Um, and, you know, Tilray has earnings, but, you know, I w I'm not going to be surprised if they report a loss. Uh, you know, it's a Canadian company. They're obviously all incorporated also in the U.S. They have a huge head office here in Toronto. They got locations in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, and Latin America. Uh, but you know what? I'm not going to be surprised if they report a loss. So, you know, keep a watch on this. Uh, I haven't heard anything positive about this actual company. And uh, I guess it'll be interesting. What, earn what earnings are they really going to report? I mean, I don't know. I'll be really surprised. Um, remember that uh, they took a 68.6 million in inventory valuation adjustment in the fourth quarter, which means that that's equal to 41% of the company's full year sales. So I don't think that's looking too positive. So you know what? Um, I think I might even look to consider an option put on this, knowing that maybe the earnings are going to suck. Now, I'll be shocked if it doesn't, but you know what? That's just my thoughts. Jim, what do you think about this Tilray chart? Because earnings is coming out tomorrow after hours. I don't want to try to go against you on this one, but sometimes we don't want to count our chickens before they hatch. But the revenue, I'm reading a financial report on here, the fourth quarter revenue of fiscal year of 2019 was up 287%. So it might, you know, it could be, it could be a surprise too. So we want to keep our, an open mind on this one, maybe. But the way everything's going and what we're hearing about how the stocks have fell back, you could might see a little rebound on it also off earnings. So it's just going to be one that you just got to wait and watch the momentum on it. And let me pull up the Tillery chart. Oh gosh. There we go. Okay, we did see, I mean, this thing's real cheap right now. It's at almost, here in the last 20 days, it was at $21, 2109 with a resistance up here right around the 2019 area, and it's pulled all the way back to 10 bucks. So that's 100% retracement in less than two weeks, two and a half weeks. So we could be... We could be finding us a little support area down here, and it could actually retrace back up to resistance level of around 1340. That's just my guess, you know, just by watching how it pulled back here in the past 20 days. Let's look at the yearly chart and see if I can find it. Yeah, we're down here at a yearly low of $10. So this is a very important area that's going to decide if it, if it, if it wants to pull back and fail, that's going to be bad for it. If it decides to break on up, break out and move up, we got a resistance that we need to break here at 1340. But yeah, this is one stock that we've really, I really liked. We, Miss Vegas called this out way in advance when the IPO came out, and it had a beautiful run to like 300 bucks. I'm gonna pull up the three-year chart and just show you that the run. Well, I'm pretty sure it was this trade here. That was the three-month. That's probably why it didn't do that. But yeah, see that three hundred dollar run. Miss Vegas was all over this at twenty bucks when the IPO came out, and once that three hundred hit, it just had you know nothing but misery all the way down. Did have a little area up here around fifty bucks where it kind of tried to consolidate, but then you know it just kept pulling on back. So we're at a three year low at ten dollars right now. That's half of what the IPO was when it first came out. This is one to keep on watch. I don't really, it's probably one of my top three, CGC and Cron. 
keep a good eye on them too because any time that earnings comes out on, on one of these major uh, uh, tickers, some of these others will follow in its trend. And so let's look back here at the 20 day one more time. We've had sat too big of a sell off, I think, and it might already took in the fact that it might earnings are, you know, going to be in and out. But the way the market's been for the last couple of weeks, everything's sold off. Everything has, and everything's an opportunity if it decides to go ahead and start moving back up. You got a lot of ways to run up on this trade from $10 all the way back to 20. I'm drawing these, these few resistance lines right here. So we can't go any lower. I don't know what the lower support on it's going to be, but I can tell you that uh, 995 was a three year low. We got a resistance that we got to get up here to right around the 1340 area. That's going to be a probably a, a real strong uh, character to break. If we can break that, we're going to run it back up to 1537. And then you've got this channel in here that you can play with. But that's going to be a very solid resistance. And that's it for TLRY. Keep it on watch. This could be your play of the year if it decides to go ahead and start to break out Monday morning or into earnings. Or, like she said, maybe pull back. But, you know, we have to kind of look at 100% sell-off in less than two and a half weeks. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one, our bonus play. And this was a great call in the room. We've been all over this trade. It's G-I-L-D. Yeah, for talk about guild, just to mention quickly, though, about Tilray. I mean, if you're going to trade it from the options side, I know Jim mentioned that uh, his thoughts on, you know, um, maybe, you know, people could be bullish on the stock, maybe with surprise earnings. But if you're going to play the options call-wise, some super cheap contracts. I mean, we're talking like 20 cents for yeah. a 12.50 call yep. for the March 20 expiry. Uh, so I think those are super cheap. But if you're going to look at the puts, which I see there's a lot more volume in the puts than the calls, um, you know, the the same strike, um, those are going for, you know, $293 each. So big difference between 20 bucks and 293 So it looks like the market is betting, from what I can see on the volatility here, that the market is heavily looking that the uh, earnings will be negative so that's just from what i could see a lot of the volume the majority is on puts there's volume in the calls but those are all um, in my opinion those are more lotto plays um but hey anything's possible and i guess we'll find out when the earnings come out after yep. hours tomorrow yep last but not least guilt now let me tell you we've been all over guilt and i gotta say shout out to longhorn again on guild because he's been all over this one i want to say that apparently he was mentioning i think in the room that he has researched 24 hours of his time on this actual stock so he's heavily invested on calls for further out expiry but you know what guild's been in the news a lot as well um because obviously they're working on the corona stuff and um you know, there is no information yet on the results of their corona, but apparently comments by Evercore were saying data from China on coronavirus could arrive this month. And this is with respect to guilt, uh, Gilead. So Gilead also did say that um, the drug may treat coronavirus in South Korea. And um, they were uh, test planning to test their antiviral in Washington state, which was mentioned on March 2nd. Uh, the stock has been given many upgrades, as high as what I've seen to $95.50. Um, sorry, that was uh, their buyout for 47 but they have a lot of upgrades here. I'm seeing different ones. I think I saw one for even 120 So definitely keep a watch on Gilead because we have so many contracts in play. One of the ones we're looking for right now that we really have um, very in, uh, a lot of people are in is the one for the April 17 expiry $80 calls. And uh, we have time on our side on that one. And uh, that is, again, for those of you that like options, the $80 call for April 17. Those are currently going for about $640 each. Uh, you can take a look at the volume on those. A lot of good volume. And there's a lot of volatility in that one in particular. And um, so Gilead, one to add 
to your Corona play, but they're not just in Corona, they're in obviously in many other things. Nice clothes, $80 and 22 cents. So those particular contracts for April are already uh, starting to be in the money here. Uh, so you may want to consider that if you like to trade options. So Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on Gilead, also mentioned by the Nigerian brothers. Very yep. unusual option plays on guilt. So oh, yeah. let's hear your thoughts on guilt. Yeah, this is one I look at every day for the past, ever since this coronavirus has come out. We mentioned it, I mean, in the room a lot. Everybody has, but this is a very nice, on the 20 day right here, let me look at the yearly first. We had a long channel for this thing for a whole year long right in this area right in here. I, I know it's all chalked up pretty much, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this, get rid of all this, and start fresh. Make it a little bit more cleaner. So that top of that channel was right around the 69.41 area. We did had had a nice five-day breakout on this stock from all the way from $70, $70.38. And I do believe the momentum is still behind it to resistance level right up here right around the 80.19 area. We got another one right here at 78 something, and we got another one right here at of support level right around the 76 14 area where we had that breakout 75 41 now I'm going to go ahead and put it on this wick here because we I'll bring it to the 20 day it'll give me a better vision of it resistance level to break is going to be at 80 78 then we've got to try to find a little spot right down here in this pivot point area of 72 30 something the low right down here okay first support is going to be at 78.33 I'd like to see that hold come back up break this double top and break that double top of 80, 80, uh, 80.78 so we got three different support levels we've got a low support at 69.41 to 70.34 I don't think we'll see that not right now the way everything's running We've got a 72.16 to 72.73 for your second, and then that solid channel that is going to be probably going to be, our, well, I'm going to call this going to be our low support area of 75.41 to 76.14. I like to see that hold if it does decide to pull back. That's going to be your third support. Your second support is going to be here at 77.01, and then your first solid support at 78.33 with a resistance to break of 8078 keep it on watch this is definitely a beauty and like I said I don't think it can go any lower down here in these two little other support areas I want to see this channel hold this resistance level of 7541 that's what's got a hold and you, then you've got your your other resistance supports right here with a resistance to break of 8078 and that's it for the market report and what a great report it was. It's a little longer than usual. We added a few more, but we just want to let everybody know that we do uh, have sympathy out there for anybody that's dealing and many families that are dealing with the coronavirus as itself or any other kind of tragic that's happened in their life. Always remember to subscribe, ring that bell for future updates, and I bet Miss Vegas might have something else she wants. Oh, be sure to watch that SPEX video I did and then I'm going to come out here a little bit later with a coronavirus just kind of run through a few of them that we haven't spoke about today. Miss Vegas anything else you'd like to say? Uh, last thing I do want to say very important uh, is that I do want to uh, mention uh, today is International Women's Day and the theme for 2020 is uh, each for equal so we want an equal world is enabled in an enabled world. So we want to make sure to celebrate women's achievements, raise awareness against bias and taking action for equality. Um, definitely we want to, we're seeing a lot of women championing tech innovations, um, inclusive workplaces so that women can thrive, more women on the board of directors, more women CEOs. We want to see uh, supporting women on you know entrepreneurial women 
so definitely huge, huge fans of the International Women's Day, and uh, it is supported by a lot of collaborative efforts. I know Amazon is sponsoring International Women's Day as a partner. So's Avon. I'm really impressed. Um, Avon doing it also. Girl Guides um, across the country is also supporting International Women's Day. And I saw a, uh, a tweet from Apple supporting International Women's Day. So really happy and loving to see these amazing companies that support women. So I love it. And congratulations to those of you that are entrepreneurial, especially those of you that are in trading or wanting to learn about trading. I really want to see more women uh, getting involved in learning about stocks, learning about options. And, you know, I had to learn so much of it on my own. And it's just an, it's an ongoing journey and really want to help women uh, learn so that they can make a positive difference, you know, for their own family and to also feel, uh, you know, financial freedom and independence. So happy International Women's Day to all the women out there and uh, celebrating you. So love to hear from you. Please comment below. And if not, you can also send me an email, Vegas at ilovestocks.com. And you're welcome to visit us in our room. We always have a free trial. And uh, if you are International Women's Day celebration, we give you a free month. So please take advantage and uh, take advantage of the opportunities that uh, you can interact with other women traders. We have so many in our room, actually, uh, which is awesome to see and uh, really good women traders uh, out there. Women are known to be more patient in trading. Uh, and that has been proven uh, time and time again. So love to see more ladies. Enjoy your weekend and see you all tomorrow. And have a great Sunday. Jim, anything else to add before we wrap it up? I salute the women traders out there. I definitely have always had a, a lady around me when it comes to trading. And Miss Vegas is my lady friend right now, and she's taught me a lot. You know, we one thing that I will say about day trading and learning how to trade stocks is that uh, we learn every day, and I'm always learning something new. And I know Miss Vegas is always learning something new, and that's what keeps our our minds in focus. And just you know, salute to the ladies out there. And that's it for the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. <clears throat> Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. We really would appreciate that. And have a great coming. And always remember to keep that coronavirus on the back of your head. This is the best time and the easiest time to trade this market right now. I mean, I'm telling you that through 15 years of experience, it, there's a little more volatility. The trends are a lot easier to spot. And... It's just something to keep a good eye out on. And that's it for I Love Stocks.